Hi everyone, let's take a look at the grade 11 JPEGD workbook on page 117. What we see is a demonstration and a quick animation of how the roller ender follower is running on the edge of the disk profile. Notice the anti-clockwise turn of the disk profile. In this question, we're going to note a few important things. So I'm not going to go through everything, but I just want to highlight a few things that is important with this example. They are using the 10 degree interval where we are used to the 15 and the 30 degree intervals. I want to demonstrate to you what to do in your construction if we give you an example of 10 degrees intervals instead of 15 and 30 degrees which is our normal use in the question they give you the camshaft diameter the minimum displacement the maximum displacement all of that information but what is important here to notice is at zero to a hundred degrees the follower rises 60 millimeters to its maximum height now that 100 degree should immediately draw your attention which obviously shows you that after the 90 degree interval there must be another 10 degree interval put after that in between the 90 and 120 degrees and then if you look further on you will also see there's a 290 degree interval which also doesn't go with the normal way that we do it where we say okay i have now um 270 and then 300 degrees and then 330 degrees now all of a sudden we see a 290 degrees so that means there's a 10 degree interval before the normal 30 degree interval that we see between 270 and 300 degrees that means we also need to incorporate the 10 degrees in that interval of 30 in there so we have to divide that 30 degrees that we are used to into 10 degree intervals as well and i will intend to show you what to do there once you've drawn in the camshaft and the roller ended follower and added all your constructions and made sure of your measurements you will get your construction that looks like this where you've divided now your camshaft into 12 equal segments and applied the minimum and the maximum displacement please note that the minimum displacement circle is drawn in full i know there are people that uh, disregard this but please you must draw in that minimum displacement circle in throughout the 360 degrees that is the expectation that's the right way to do it and then also draw for yourself the maximum displacement as well so the circle for the minimum displacement must be drawn in and the circle the full circle of the uh, maximum displacement must also be drawn in that is just an indicator to show us that's the minimum and the maximum displacement of the movement of our follower so and then very important we are also going to look at the center point of the roller ended follower because we know that the baseline of our graph of displacement must start from the center point of the roller ended follower so from that center point we are going to project a light construction line out as far to the left as possible and then we will do our construction of the graph of displacement on the left and we will make sure that we see the maximum displacement and apply that and we label our 30 degree intervals draw in all the 30 degree interval segments so this is the norm this is what we used to and sometimes we have the 15 degree intervals in between as well but what happens now when we have to look at the 10 degree interval and this is where i want to focus so now we see that after the 90 degrees we have the 100 degrees how do we get that what we need to do is look at the scale which is six millimeters to each 30 degrees so each 30 degree interval is measured on the x-axis as six millimeters therefore what we need to do is we need to divide that 30 degrees into three so that we get 10 degree intervals in between the 90 and 120 so we also have to then go and say that our six millimeters needs to be divided by three as well and that will give us two millimeters so on the x-axis here so on the horizontal uh, measurement that we do we have to go and measure two millimeters on our graph of displacement 
Once we've done that, we are going to now use that 100 degrees and apply it here to our gram disk profiles construction. Now here the easiest is just take out your protractor and from the center point of your cam shaft, you're going to measure that 10 degree interval. That's the quickest and the shortest way to do this. So for your graph, you do the calculation, six divided by three, which will give you the two millimeters, which will give you the 100 degree interval. You project that now to your maximum displacement on the vertical center line and then here between 90 degrees and 120 degrees make use of your protractor and just go and measure off the 100 degrees and once you've done that you're going to draw a light construction line that represents that angle and you would have continued on now to do the rest of your uniform motions graph but now you get to 290 degrees again so again you're posed with this 10 degree interval challenge and we know that we have the 270 and then 300 degrees and that is 30 degrees in total and a distance on the x-axis or horizontally measured at 6 millimeters. Therefore, we know we have to divide it by 3 once more. So that 30 degrees divided by 3 will give us 10 degree intervals or we say 6 millimeters divided by 3 will give us 2 millimeters. Therefore, we are going to go back words from 300 degrees two millimeters to the left and that would be the positioning of our 290 degree interval and please notice that we always label all of these intervals you have to your main intervals are labeled here you if you don't have space here you go and you label it here at the top but you must indicate it both with the construction line here that indicates the positioning of the follower on the graph of displacement and you also will then obviously go and indicate it on your cam disk profile as well. Once you have done that, you are going to do the same that you did with the 100 degree interval. And you're going to make use of your protractor and on the maximum displacement mark off the 290 degrees, which is the 10 degree interval before you get to 300 degrees. So now you have the correlation between your cam disk profile and your graph of displacement. Next you will obviously project that height of the graph of displacement onto your vertical center line. Use your compass from the center of the camshaft and then project that height now onto the 290 degrees as well as on all of the other segments where you now have the follower in its position at 210, 240, 270 and 290 degrees. Once you've done all of your other constructions and you've drawn in all of the placements of your roller in that follower on each of the 30 degree intervals, you're going to go and use your French curve and draw in a proper curve for the cam disk profile. We just need to make sure that it is a smooth transition, a smooth curve so that our roller can't break off when it goes over these odd shapes on the cam disk profile. I hope this quick video has helped you to understand how to apply the 10 degree interval on your graph of displacement as well as on your cam disk profiles construction. Thank you for watching.